What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you've never been here before. My name is Roxy and I'm excited for you guys to be here today. So this class is gonna be really hard, but we're gonna get through it and we're gonna feel like some empowered badasses afterwards. And I just want to set a little disclaimer out there before we get going that this is not about getting a six pack. This is not about trying to sell you the idea that a six pack is gonna improve your worth as a human being and that it's the most important thing. True core stability comes from the inside out, not from the superficial layer of abs that is gonna give you the look of a six pack, but your deep, deep core muscles, the ones that surround the spine that are gonna be your true stabilizers that are gonna protect you from injury, they're gonna save your spine, that's gonna help all of your muscles have not have to overcompensate for any weakness in the core and prevent you from any injury or overstrain with other muscles of the body. I had to learn the hard way what true core strength means after getting injured. Because while I was dancing, I totally thought, oh, if it looks like I have abs, then I must have abs, right? Oh, I was working out every day, had six pack, and then I still got injured in my low back. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, I thought I was super strong, but it turns out that I didn't actually know how to activate my core properly to reach those deepest, most important muscles. And I'm sure you guys have all heard your teachers in class, you know, telling you to suck in, pull in the core, act Activate, like draw in the tummy, all of those things, but never really dive deep into like, what does that actually mean? What are the muscles? How do you actually activate them? And how do you actually get sustainable, sustainable, stable core strength that is gonna protect you from injuries. So there's a few things to know just before we get into it, a few alignment cues that I really want you to focus on to really activate the proper muscles that we're trying to get to, mainly your transverse abs, your TVA. And to do that, think about any time that we're on the floor, you really want to be pressing your low back into the floor. So there shouldn't be any arch or space underneath your back, but really imprinting the spine onto the floor. You can already start to feel your core working here. And then as well as keeping your, um, your ribs together. So if they start to like open up like this, that's just gonna make your back arch. Your core isn't really on, so you really wanna think about drawing them together and down as well. And then staying really aware that your belly isn't puffing up in any of the core. Like you could do a crunch and let your belly puff up like that. Or if you're actually pulling your core down to lift you up, that's how you're actually gonna activate those muscles. So mostly just always think about drawing the core in towards the spine you know, even if we're up here doing something and keeping that pelvis nice and neutral, nice kind of flat back. I don't wanna say tuck the pelvis, but finding a lot of length from the crown of the head to the tailbone to make your spine nice and long. And then just keeping everything together and also breathing with your diaphragm. Inhaling, expanding the lower ribs just a little bit. And as you exhale, that's when you really wanna contract and pull the muscles. In. So you wanna be moving with your breath and staying really focused and aware. And a lot of people might argue that if you're trying to you know, get a workout and use yoga to build strength, then it's not true yoga, that it's not going along with like the traditional yoga philosophy. But I honestly feel that you can be doing yoga in any kind of situation and it is all about your mindset. It is all about how aware you are of what's going on in your body, what muscles are being activated, which ones are relaxed, which ones are tense? Where is your breath going? Are you even breathing? Paying attention to your mindset, you know, thinking about when it starts to get hard, when we start to face the challenges, such as the workout that we're about to do, where does your mind go? Does it get frustrated? Does it get annoyed? Does it get, an, it could get annoyed at me, like, oh, why is she doing this? This is hard, I'm, this is, I'm annoyed. Or getting annoyed at yourself and getting really frustrated, like, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm not strong enough, this is hard, like, I'm weak. 
If you start to think all of those thoughts, be aware of that and then try and shift your mind into a place of the more growth mentality of I am capable, I am strong, this is going to make me strong, like I'm resilient, I'm putting my self-care first. This is an act of self-care and self-love to really learn how to strengthen up the most important muscles that are going to support you on the mat or on the stage. You know, if we can learn how to have a nice, focused, centered, positive mindset here while we're being challenged on the mat, that is gonna translate over to when we are performing on the stage or doing an audition or a really hard class and still be able to stay positive, to stay focused, to really, you know, train in that proprioception, that deep awareness of what's going on throughout the whole body and how you're breathing and how you're feeling and just being more in touch with ourselves as a whole. So then we're also going to be really working with the solar plexus chakra, which is the chakra that energizes us to be independent, to go after our dreams, to make choices, to manifest the things that we want into reality and to take action. It's our confidence, our empowerment, and our inner fire fueling us to go after the things we want, to get stronger, to learn, to transform, all of those things. So as well, I know we've got a lot going on, thinking about the alignment keeping a positive mindset, but also just visualizing this like inner fire, this warm glow emanating from your center, fueling your whole being, fueling all your muscles. And I promise you that by the end of this class, you're going to be feeling amazing. So we're going to take the nervous system up. We're really going to send it hard, get nice and fiery, and then we'll bring it back down, stretch it out and cool off. So I'll make sure that your psoas and hip flexors aren't too tight and that you can go on with the rest of your day in a nice, calm, yet alert state. So if that sounds good to you guys, let's get right to it. All right guys, so grab yourself some water, stay hydrated. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna start standing at the back of the mat, just planting the feet, taking a second to breathe and just come into the present moment, relaxing your shoulders down by your side, finding that neutral pelvis drawing down through the back of the body and pulling up to the front, pulling those core muscles in. Inhale, stretching the arms up interlacing your fingers, pressing the palms up to the sky. We're just gonna reach up, creating space through the spine to reach up and over to the right. Inhaling center and exhaling over to the left. Just get a nice stretch and releasing the hands, melt forward, coming into a forward fold just for a moment, shaking your head no and then walking your hands forward, coming into a nice strong downward facing dog. And here you wanna think about even pulling your ribs in. So if they're kinda of hanging out, here splaying open, think about drawing them in, pulling the core in. Find that nice flat back here. We're gonna inhale, lifting up onto the toes and ripple forward, pulling the core in, moving one vertebra at a time, coming into a nice strong plank. And exhale, drawing the elbows into the ribs, lower down. And then inhale, press up into an upward facing dog. Exhale, pulling the core in as you lift the hips up and back to the sky, downward facing dog. Moving through that flow again, inhale, rippling forward into a plank, rounding through each vertebra. Exhaling, lowering down to hover above the floor, and then inhale, keeping the hips and knees lifted off the floor, shine the heart forward, crown of the head reaching towards the sky, pulling the core in to lift up and back. One more time, inhaling, ripple forward, really drawing the core in. Exhale, lower, hover, and then press up to upward facing dog. Exhale, back to downward facing dog. Now we're gonna inhale, rippling forward into plank again. Lengthen through the spine. And instead of lowering down, you're gonna bend the knees, 
to hover them above the floor, pulling the core in here, and then lifting the hips up to downward dog. So five of those moving with your own breath. Inhale. Exhale, hover. Inhale, lift. Rippling forward. Exhale. Inhale, ripple forward. Exhale, hover, and lift. Inhale. Beautiful, last one. Beautiful, now coming forward into a nice, strong plank. Getting those wrists right underneath the shoulders. Nice, flat back, long spine. And then imagine you could pull the mat apart with your feet and hands. Pulling them out towards the side, keeping that belly drawing in. Beautiful, and switching your weight onto your left hand. Keeping that shoulder stacked right over the wrist and pressing into the ground to lift up. Stretch that right arm up, pulling the core in, drawing the ribs together. And then if you feel stable, bring that right leg up and breathe. Exhale, lower, switching sides. Getting that shoulder right over the wrist. Press into the floor to lift up and out of that shoulder socket, drawing the belly in. And then for an extra challenge, developing that leg out to the side. And then breathe. So we want to strengthen up our core so that the rest of our body can really move fluidly and with more freedom. Coming back to plank and then lowering the knees down, coming into a nice tabletop position. Maybe take a couple cat cows if that feels good for you. All right, we're gonna move into our first exercise now we've gotten a little warmed up into our core stabilizer, our spines, sorry, our spine stabilizer. So here I want you to not let your belly drop like this. We're gonna inhale, lift the right leg back, and it's really easy if you wanna get that leg up and let the belly drop, but no, draw the belly in. Flat back, squaring off your hips. Your glutes are gonna have to work a lot more here. Reach out through the toes. And then once you've found that and feel balanced, reach your left arm forward. So we've got right leg, left arm. You tap that toe to the floor. Flat back. Exhale, lift, and draw the knee and elbow together. Inhale, get long. Stay really mindful that the back stays flat and doesn't drop into an arch. Tap the toe. Exhale. Inhale, reach. Ooh, doing it with you guys, a little hard to talk. Exhale. Inhale, reach, almost tucking the pelvis here, actively pulling that back into a flattened state. Tap, lift. Drawing the core in to curve the back and extend. Moving nice and slow here so we can really be aware of what's moving, especially in our spine. Tap, lift. Extend, tap, lift. Also pressing into the floor with that right arm to stay lifted up out of that shoulder socket. Last one, exhale, contract. Extend, tap, lift, reach and hold. Breathe. And exhale, lower. All right, other side now. Extending the left leg out, keeping your hips squared at first, so more parallel position, and really drawing that core up and in. I don't want to see any arching or sagging. Then once you've, once you've found that, extend the right arm forward, finding length from fingertips to toes. Tap the toe. Exhale, one. Inhale, extend. Exhale, two. Inhale, reach. Tap. Exhale, three. Extend, really mindful of the low back. What's it doing? Tap. Exhale, four. Exhale, five. Halfway there. Tap. Six, really using that exhale to draw everything together, contract that core. Tap, seven, eight, almost there, tap, nine, 
Squeeze the booty, 10, beautiful extended hold. Find that flat back, long neck, and relax down. Beautiful, good job guys. All right, now coming onto the forearms, making sure that your hands are parallel here. Don't open them up. Keep nice parallel hands, spreading your fingertips on the floor, straightening the legs, coming into a forearm plank just for a moment. This is the position we're gonna find as we do our forearm plank ups. Now this is one of the best exercises I learned as I was in my recovery, trying to strengthen up my core and move on from a disc lower back injury I had. So what you're gonna do is start in a sphinx pose here, drawing your elbows back, shining the heart forward, long neck, keeping your toes tucked and your knees straight. With an exhale, you're gonna press into the floor with your hands, pull your core in sharply, and lift the hips. Inhale, lower, shine the heart. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, press up. Inhale, lower. Press up and lower. Press up. Inhale, lower. Press up. Inhale, lower. Draw the belly in. Inhale, lower. Draw it in and lower. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Flat back and release. Long spine and lower. Exhale, inhale, exhale, and lower. Beautiful job, guys. All right, now coming onto the side, getting that elbow right underneath the shoulder, laying here like you're chilling in bed with Bay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, bend uh, that lower leg here. You're gonna straighten the right leg, and you want the foot to kind of be right below the knee, like the knee could almost rest in the arch of your foot. Getting the shoulder right under the, right over the elbow. You can have your hand here on the hip, or for a little support, put it on the floor. We are going to press up and lower. So here you wanna find almost a tilt going down to the floor rather than you know, opening up like this. Looking down, pulling that core in, really strong side obliques here, but what's also getting into the glute need, that side booty here. Because the booty is also a super important part of the core. All right, ready? We've got 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Press into the floor, lift. Six. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hold the hips up, lower the leg, extend both legs. 10 hip drops. Two, three, four, five, six. Draw the belly in. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Beautiful. Staying up with the hips. Turning back into a forearm plank, interlace your fingers. Nice flat back, drawing the belly in. And we'll go side to side, dropping the hip for one, two, three. Mind in the muscle, everyone. Pulling the core in, drawing the ribs together. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. All right, flipping over to the other side now. On our right forearm. Here, I'll flip around to face you guys. Getting that elbow right under the shoulder. Bend that bottom leg. Nice, strong, straight top leg. We'll press up for one, two, three, four. You got it. Five ribs in, core in, six. Squeeze the booty, seven, eight, Nine, ten, lift your hips up, lower the feet, straighten the legs, ten hip drops for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
then flipping back to that forearm plank. Finding a nice flat back. Deep breath, send that oxygen to your muscles. And we'll dip for one, two, three, four, five. Where is your mindset? What thoughts are you thinking? Seven, eight, you are capable, you are strong, you are putting your self care first and lower down. Beautiful. Crossing up to a cobra, inhale, then exhale, sending your hips back into a child's pose. Catch your breath for a moment. Feeling the support of the floor, sending your breath down the entire length of your spine. All right, and we're gonna flip around onto our backs. So coming down, here's where you really wanna think about keeping that low back pressed into the floor throughout all the exercises. So the first one we're gonna do is to really get us in touch with our transverse abs, because if they're not, whew, I got dry mouth, y'all, we gotta drink some water. Mm. Okay. Keep going. So if you've never really felt your transverse abs, you haven't been used to training them, this is how to get you really in touch with them. So what you're gonna do, lift your knees up, find a tabletop 90 degree angle with your shins here, and press that low back into the floor. I don't wanna see any space. Nothing should be able to get under there. Keeping your core drawn in, place your hands to your thighs, and press your hands into your thighs and thighs into your hands. So there's a lot of pressing going on here. Pressing hands to the thighs, low back into the floor. You're gonna inhale and exhale. Lift the head and shoulders off, draw the belly down towards the floor. Look at it, make sure it's not puffing up. And press for five, four, three, press, 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 two, one. Release, hug the knees into the chest. Take those knees in a couple circles here with the hands. All right, we've got it again. Take that 90 degree angle tabletop, press the low back into the floor, hands to thighs, and lift. Drawing the belly down, 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 press, press, press. Staying present. Noticing what's going on, really actively pressing everything. And release, relax, hug knees into the chest. Take a couple knee circles here, you guys are doing great. Notice how when we're doing this intense work, you can't do anything but stay in the present moment. All right, one more time. Knees up, core down, hands to thighs, and exhale, lift. Drawing the belly down, down, down. Feel that deepest layer of the core. Five, four, three, press, press. Give it all you've got. Two, one. Beautiful, relax for a moment, catch your breath. So that is your TVA right there. So, all right, now this is everyone's favorite. <laughs> we are going to take the same thing, pressing into the hand of the thighs, but only do once. So we'll start with the left leg, bring it into that 90 degree angle, press the left hand into it so you've got that dynamic press going into the floor and into the hand, and then you're gonna extend the right leg and right arm. Now only go as low with that leg as you can keep your low back pressing into the floor. You're gonna extend, get that press going nice and strong through the left side. Exhale, crunch. Inhale. Four. Exhale, five. Six. Seven. Eight, press. Don't forget about that left side. Nine. Ten. All right. So we're training our transverse abs to be active while we're doing other motion with our hands and arms because like in dance, we're never really holding anything static. So we want our muscles to be strong when we're static and when we're in motion too. All right, left or right side. Yeah, righty. Come on, get that leg up, press the hand into the thigh, get that nice strong press going and then reach the leg out. Contract one. Two, staying really present and mindful that you're pressing into this right side. Three, four, five, six. Keep
keep that low back flat. Seven, eight, keep that belly down, make sure it's not puffing up. Nine, 10, beautiful. Good job, everyone. All right, extend those legs up to the ceiling now. It's your choice how you're feeling today. If you wanna do one leg at a time or both legs at a time, but you have to know your limits. If you go so low that your low back starts to arch off the floor, you've gone too far. You need to ease up back a little bit. Otherwise, you're just training your muscles in the wrong alignment, which could lead to injury. So with both arms up, you can either do alternating leg and arm lowers, doing right arm, left leg, or if you're really feeling frisky today, you can do both legs and arms, but keeping that low belly down. All right, we've got 12, so choose which one you wanna do. I'm gonna do both legs. Inhale, keep that back flat, and exhale, drawing the core down. That's what lifts the leg up. Three. Four, really actively drawing the core down to lift up. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, beautiful. Now lowering both legs down. You're gonna lift the head and shoulders off and extend the arms forward, really pulling that core in. This is called canoe. From here, pulling the core in, we're gonna lift up into boat, either with legs straight or bent, depending on how you're feeling today. Pulling that core in, keeping that back nice and flat. No crunching like this. Nice tall spine and slowly lowering down, looking at your belly, making sure that it's drawing down, not puffing up, and lift. Dropping down, exhale, drop. Dropping down. Last one, moving nice and slow. Beautiful, releasing down onto the back. Whew. Are you guys sweaty? Cause I definitely am. But we gotta keep going. Bringing the hands behind the head now. We're gonna go through some bicycles. I'm sure you've probably done these before, but we are, wanna stay really mindful and moving nice and slow instead of just kinda busting out some half-ass mess here. So what we're gonna do is extend the left leg. We're gonna also extend the right leg and twist, really drawing that belly down, drawing that left elbow to the right leg. And then switching, getting a nice developé with the leg that's coming up and switch, and switch. Glancing at your belly as you move through the center to make sure it's staying nice and down. Make sure you're breathing, inhale, exhale, twist. Good job guys, you got it. Inner fire, solar plexus. Getting that chakra lit. Feel the burn, embrace that inner fire. We have four, three, really twisting. Give that elbow to the leg. Two, one, beautiful. Resting for a moment. Ooh, all right, save. This is our last one on our back, so give it your all. What we're gonna do is an eagle crunch. Now a crunch is still a good exercise if you know how to execute it properly. So we're gonna do, take the legs out, wrap the right leg over the left, and interlace those legs like you would in nice eagle pose. Taking the arms out, you wrap the left arm under the right, cross at the elbows, intertwine the hands. So from here, Taking this 90 degree angle here, you're gonna drop the toes and the fingertips to the floor and exhale, pulling the core down and pulling the core down is what is gonna activate the lift. 
drawing the elbows and knees together. All right, we've got 10. Keeping the core engaged even as you lower, exhale, lift. Inhale, keeping that back flat to the floor. Three, four, five, woo, six, we got this. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I hate that one. I hate it, but I love it. Switching sides. Left leg on top, right arm underneath. All right. So drawing the elbows and knees together, we've dropped for one, two. Drawing that belly down as you lift. Three. I'm flailing. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Beautiful. All right, releasing your knees to the ground. You're gonna press up into a bridge, catching your breath for a moment, stretching out those abs. Good work, guys, and rolling down through each vertebra. One at a time. We're gonna do five flowing bridges. So rolling up, extending the arms up and back as you lift. Exhaling, rolling back down. Inhale, rolling up. Exhale, releasing back down. Slowing down the breath a little bit. And release. The last one, pressing into the floor through the heels to lift up. Bringing the hands back to your sides, bringing those feet close together. You're gonna lift the right leg off the floor. Find that little bit of a tuck in the pelvis. And we're gonna drop for one. Lift, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Keep that pelvis tucked, eight, nine, 10. Switching sides, right leg down, left leg up. Drop for one, two. Feel your abs, make sure they're engaged. Make sure that booty is on. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Beautiful, lowering down. Hugging the knees into the chest as you rock back and rocking forward, coming up into a nice strong plank. We thought we were done, but we're not done yet. Nice strong plank, lower down onto the floor, onto your belly. We're gonna do five locust lifts. So strengthening up the back of the core because there are core muscles in the back as well. So bringing your hands behind you, you can inhale, lift up, extend the legs and chest back, squeeze the booty. Lower down, you can lower down all the way. I don't wanna crush my mic, so I'm just gonna come down halfway. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down all the way. Inhale, lengthening through the crown of the head as you lift up, nice long spine. Release. Inhale, lift. Squeezing the legs together. And lower, last one. Beautiful, releasing your hands down, pressing up and back for a child's pose, catching your breath. Beautiful, everyone. Now we're gonna put that core work we just did into action, into a little flow here. So coming back up onto your knees, tuck your toes, lift the hips up and back to a downward facing dog. Shake out your head, no. Draw your ribs and core together. Spread the fingertips wide. From here, you're gonna inhale, sweeping the left leg up to the sky. And exhale, step it forward in between your hands, getting that knee right over the ankle. Nice, strong back leg, drawing the inner thighs together, squeezing the booty, lifting up. Shoulders relaxing down away from the ears. And here, we wanna think about finding that neutral pelvis so we're not just hanging out here, like putting all this pressure into the low back. Want to find that neutral pelvis. You might have to bend your back leg a little bit. 
to find that strong spine, pull your core in just like we were doing with those one-legged bridge lifts. Find that little bit of a tuck, just enough so we can get a nice neutral pelvis and then work on straightening that back leg. Arms up, we're just gonna do a few arm circles reaching down and up to that neutral pelvis. Exhale, grounding that energy down. Beautiful, this time opening up into a nice strong warrior two, bending low through that front leg, energy shooting down and out through the back edge. And here we're gonna come into a side angle, but instead of lowering that bottom hand down, we're gonna lift both arms up, pulling that core in. Nice deep breath, smile, we got this. And then opening up into triangle, straightening that front leg, but not locking into the knee joint, lengthening the crown of the head and tailbone away from each other. And breathe. Beautiful, bending into that front leg again, taking side angle with a bind, wrapping the arms behind you, twisting open through the shoulders and the collarbones. From here, you're gonna step this back leg in a little bit for this real cute Instagram-worthy pose here. <laughs> Just kidding. So getting really strong through this right leg here. Make sure your bind is really strong. Squeezing the right glute, engaging the core, pull it in. We're gonna lift up to standing with this bind. And if this is where you are today, that's great. If you wanna go into full Bird of Paradise, point your toes and lift that leg off. All right, so the core is really active here, pulling it in, shoulders down, long neck, making sure that your right glute is really strong here, pulling up on the muscles surrounding the kneecaps, really strong standing legs, spreading the toes, grounding down, and breathe, enjoy the stretch. Really tall spine here, trying to draw the pelvis down. Beautiful, and then slowly begin to bend that leg if you had it straight. And keeping the core engaged as you slowly lower with control and step that right leg back. Opening back up into a warrior two. And you're gonna inhale, coming back into that nice, strong, high lunge here. I'm gonna scoot back a little bit from here, shifting your weight into that left leg. You're gonna come forward into a warrior three, extending that right leg back, keeping your hips squared here. So we're working in a parallel position. Really long, flat back, toes reaching away, bringing your hands to your hips, grounding down through this left leg. We're gonna tap the toe and lift, squeeze the booty, tap, and lift, keeping the core and ribs drawn in, tap, lift, we've got 10, so four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe, nine, 10, beautiful, from here you're gonna ponche down, so lifting that right leg to tip you forward, until you can release those hands to the ground, get that nice stretch, and then stepping that foot back, and then stepping back into a downward facing dog. Shake the head no when you get there. Breathing deeply, then you're gonna inhale. I'm gonna switch around so I can face you guys on the other side. Inhale, lifting the right leg up to the sky. Then exhale, stepping that foot forward in between your hands, coming up to a nice, strong, high lunge, finding that neutral pelvis, tucking the tailbone just a little bit, drawing the tailbone down, engaging the core, and then straighten that back leg, squeezing your booty, drawing your inner thighs together, reach those arms up. Shoulders down, away from the ears, doing a couple arm circles, reaching forward. And press down. Inhale forward. Press down. Inhale. And then opening up into a nice strong warrior two. From here, taking that side angle, reaching both arms out, drawing the core in really strong here. Like, yeah, abs of steel here. 
One more breath until you open up into triangle, moving that right leg towards straight, but keeping a little micro bend there. No locking into the joints. Reaching out, we're not collapsing here, but we're reaching out long, finding space in between the leg and the torso. Beautiful, and then exhale, bend that leg, find that bind, wrapping your arms around, opening up through the collarbones, and then you're gonna step that left leg back, come into this prep here, getting really strong through the ground, the legs, spreading those toes, and then squeezing the glutes, drawing the core in as you lift up, find your nice stable position here, and then straighten that leg. Breathe, find your steadiness, find your center. If you're having trouble balancing, slow down your breath. Slowing down the breath, slow down the mind, slowing down the heart rate, allowing you to find more stillness. And then slowly coming back down, extend that leg back, opening up into warrior two, and then sweeping that arm forward, coming into the high lunge, facing the front, squaring off the hips. Find that neutral pelvis core nice and strong here. And then shifting the weight forward, coming up strong into a warrior three. Ooh, find your balance. Hands to the waist, squaring off the hips, strong standing leg. Tap for one, two. Bringing those ribs up, really pulling the core into the spine here. Three. Six, seven, eight, nine, long neck, 10 and hold. Lift that leg up to tilt you forward for a ponche. And then slowly bring your hands to the ground for standing splits. Step that leg back, coming into a downward facing dog. Beautiful. So now inhaling, lifting that right leg up. And exhale, stepping it forward in between the hands, lower the back knee down. Moving into our more chill out part of the practice. So, good job guys. We've done the hardest part, so now it's time to rest and let all of that hard work integrate into our body. So we're gonna stretch out the psoas muscle here to make sure it's not locking up or feeling too tight. And what we wanna do here is get this 90 degree angle with our front leg. So we're not really leaning too far like this, but you wanna squeeze that left glute really, make sure it's really strong. Find that little bit of a tuck in the pelvis here, lengthening down through the tailbone, lengthening up through the front of the body, and then reach that left arm up. Getting an opening stretch through the front of the left hip here. And breathe, lengthening up and away. Beautiful, reaching that hand down. You're gonna lift that front leg up and then place it down into pigeon pose here. So pigeon is a really great way to again extend through the hip flexor here, release any tension. But before we just melt down into it, I wanna do a little dynamic mobility stretch here so that we are balanced in our flexibility and our strength here. So bring the hands either out to the side, you can have one hand down, or if you want both arms up for a really um, strong challenge here, what you're gonna do is wherever you are with your arms, lengthening up through the spine and lowering down to hover above the floor, and then squeezing the glutes, pulling the core in to lift yourself back up. Inhale, lengthen, hover, pull the core in, squeeze, exhale, lift up. If this is hurting your knee at all, flex this front foot. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale, last one, lengthening through the spine, pulling the core in and up. <sighs> Placing the hands on the ground as you come a little arch back. And then you've earned it, melt forward, relax over that leg. 
The more that you can bring your shin parallel with the top of your mouth, the more of a hip opening stretch it will be. So it's up to you how close you want that foot into your body or away. And then as you breathe here, bring your awareness to your low belly to really get the psoas releasing benefits of this stretch. You wanna be letting your belly relax and expand as you inhale and deflate as you exhale, giving your psoas and all of your abdominal muscles and organs a little massage. Maybe even closing your eyes, letting this be an inward experience. Beautiful, inhale to press back up onto your hands, tuck the toes, and step back into a downward facing dog. Beautiful, now extend the left leg up to the ceiling with a stretch, and exhale, stepping it forward in between your hands, lower that back knee down, finding that neutral pelvis that we've been talking about all class, squeezing your right butt cheek, make sure it's really Give it a grab, <laughs> make sure it's really on. And then reaching, placing your left hand on that thigh, reaching that right arm up. Relaxing the shoulders down, lengthening up through the crown of the head. And breathe. Nice, slow, and relaxed. Beautiful, release your hands down, pick up that front foot and move it into a pigeon pose here, flexing that foot if that would feel better for your knee. <sighs> Taking a moment to settle into pigeon. Then bringing your arms out to the side. You're gonna lengthen up through the crown of the head, shoulders down. Come forward to hover, squeezing the left glute. Exhale, lift up. <sighs> Inhale, forward to hover. Exhale, lift. Inhale, exhale, inhale, squeeze to lift. Beautiful, releasing back a little arch. And then coming forward for the stretch. And again, relaxing in your belly. Letting all of those muscles that you just worked so hard release a little bit, allow them to soften. Releasing any tension in your neck and shoulders or jaw. Beautiful, coming back up. As you inhale, sweep that leg around. And rolling down onto your back, hug your knees into your chest and just give yourself a big hug as you rock side to side, just massaging out that low back. Shouldn't be hurting, but still just feels nice. Beautiful, extend the left leg down to the floor, keep that right knee hugging in. And then reaching for the outer edge of that right foot, we're gonna open up into a half happy baby, letting that right knee drop down towards the right side, staying grounded through that left hip, letting the hips open, feeling the support of the floor beneath you. And just relax and just send some gratitude throughout your whole body for its resiliency, for its strength, for moving through that practice with grace. And then bringing that knee up and over to the other side. It's up to you if you'd like to keep it bent or if you want a little outer leg stretch, you can hold onto the inner arch and let that leg be straight, coming into a twist. Nice, slow, deep breaths. Tapping into that diaphragmatic movement as you breathe, letting the low ribs and belly expand as you inhale and release as you exhale, just allowing the nervous system to calm down, letting the heart rate slow. Beautiful, 
maybe even closing your eyes. And just know that you have empowered yourself today by taking this time to learn about your body, to try new things, to activate new muscles. You are truly putting the power and your own health into your own hands. And now you can think about all those same core activation techniques we're using here as when you're in class, at the bar, or anything to really make sure. Now that you know what it feels like to have those muscles really active, try and find that feeling again the next time you're in class. To make sure that your core is really supporting you through any movement that you might be doing. And exhale, slowly releasing back to the center. Extend the right leg down and draw that left leg into the body. Reaching for the outer edge of that left foot. Let that knee open, coming into a half happy baby, drawing that knee towards the floor. Stay nice and grounded through that right hip. Remember the breath, staying present, just noticing how, how everything's feeling. See if with every exhale you can release a little more and take that twist either with the leg bent or the leg straight. Listening to your body to find what feels best for you. Slowly letting the muscles of the legs release. Letting the belly relax, letting the shoulders relax. And slowly lowering back to the center, release your leg to the ground. Coming into Shavasana. So here, just want you to gently rest both of your hands on your belly. Closing your eyes, allowing yourself to surrender to gravity, to enjoy this moment of stillness after all of that hard work. You guys crushed it. Definitely make sure you drink a lot of water after this. Closing your eyes and connecting into the energy of the solar plexus chakra that fiery, passionate spark within you that motivates you to work hard for your craft, for your art. Imagine that right below your hands, there is a warm yellow glow in the middle of your belly. This bright yellow star that is a part of you filling up your entire being with its warmth and light. Knowing that you are the creator of your life. You are the creator of your own reality. And you have the gift and the responsibility to choose how you are going to show up for yourself how you're going to put yourself and your well-being and health first. How are you going to live in this one vessel that we are gifted, this one body that we have for life? Just sending your gratitude for it from the crown of your head all the way to the soles of your feet. Letting your eyes soften, letting your brow soften.
Letting your whole being relax. Letting the breath be slow. Feeling the gentle rise and fall of your belly beneath your hands. Slowly begin to deepen your breath, filling up your entire sacred vessel with air. You just give your belly a little gentle massage with your hands. Again, just sending yourself all the love and gratitude for being able to do what you can do, to be able to move, Massage into the top of your hips and your hip flexors, maybe even your quads a little bit. And then reach your arms up overhead, taking a nice big stretch as you point your toes, circling your fingers and wrists, just bringing in some energy and vitality into your body, breathing to energize. And then exhale, rolling onto one side and taking your time to come up into a comfortable seated position to finish off practice. Thank you. Thank you for doing that hard work with me. I'm so proud of you for taking the time to put your well-being first, to take the time to educate yourself, to motivate yourself, to put yourself first. And that is true empowerment, knowing how to put yourself first and do what is right for your body so that you can succeed. Inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead, gathering in one last breath together, uniting the palms, drawing the thumbs down to the third eye so that we may see clearly and trust our intuition. Drawing the thumbs to the lips so that we may speak words of kindness and truth. And finally, drawing the hands to the heart so that we may act with love and compassion towards ourselves and others. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.